Hi everybody, it's Wynn. Hey guys, it's Daniel. Hi, it's Kim Kim. Hello everyone, it is Lido. Hello everyone, it's Ed. Hi everybody, it's Kit. And welcome to another video by the Entropy System. Hey everybody, it's Daniel. One thing we wanna do as we roll into the new year is diversify the style of videos that we do. Right now, there's a lot of us just talking to the camera, which considering this is an educational channel makes sense, but we thought it'd be fun to shake things up. So we decided our first uh, new style of video, we would go to the mall and do random on the spot interviews to see what strangers knew or didn't know about DID. In theory, it was a really cool idea. The people who stopped and allowed us to ask questions were very respectful. Uh, their answers were very interesting and brought a, a kind of a new perspective of how people who, you know, aren't viewers of our channel uh, might see the disorder and the misconceptions they might have or not have. Unfortunately, when you're recording at a loud mall, you can't get rid of the sounds of said loud mall. <laughs> The audio was absolutely unusable, but a uh, quick thank you to these people for stopping and talking to us. If you're watching this video, we really appreciate what you had to say uh, and the fact that you gave us the time of day. But let's get into what we learned. So the first question we ask people straight up is, have you ever heard of dissociative identity disorder? Two of the individuals that we talked to recognized the name dissociative identity disorder. Everybody else recognized the name multiple personality disorder. Most people that watch our channel know that dissociative identity disorder used to be called multiple personality disorder. However, the name got changed in 1994 when professionals decided it needed a name that better described the condition. In general, it was thought that multiple personality disorder caused confusion and led to the idea that there were multiple personalities grown on top of each other where dissociative of identity disorder better describes the disorder is one consciousness fractured in to many individual identities. Most people, even if they recognize the name multiple personality disorder, had no idea what the condition actually consisted of. Next question we asked is if they believed that dissociative identity disorder was a disorder that was actually recognized by professionals. The general consensus is that yes, some professionals did recognize it, but that it should be more recognized. Those were the words of the people we talked to, not my own. It was encouraging to hear that they said that it should be more recognized when they thought that perhaps it wouldn't be, telling me that they did believe that it was a legitimate diagnosis to have. Now in the past there has been controversy about the legitimacy of DID, however with modern psychological studies as well as concrete evidence such as brain scans that show significantly different brain activity between alters, there isn't really a question among most professionals whether DID is real or not. The next question we asked was if they thought that people with DID were more or less likely to exhibit violent behavior. This is the one that surprised me the most. The majority of the people we talked to did not think that having DID was a direct indicator to violence in a person's behavior. Most of them thought that you'd have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis, as you would with any human. Next, we asked if they thought that someone with DID had the potential to live a quote-unquote normal life. The example we gave for a normal life was having a job, going to school, having a family. This is what society widely accepts as what it should be desirable. Every person across the board said that, yes, they believed with proper care and treatment that someone with DID had just as much of a chance at a normal life as anybody else. My favorite answer came from a guy who said, well, mostly I think it depends on if they want it. But it depends on the person that wants a normal life. Maybe a person doesn't want a family or a degree and is just working on a life in their own direction. If you're watching this, Thanks for giving such a thoughtful reply. Lastly, we asked how prevalent people thought DID was, and wow, the answers were 
all over the place. Some people said that there were maybe nine cases in history. Somebody else said that maybe 30% of the population had DID. When we broke it down to actual, understandable numbers though, people seem pretty surprised at how prevalent it was. The example we gave is that in Omaha, Nebraska, the population is roughly 500,000, a little bit less. It's estimated that one to 3% of the world population has dissociative identity disorder. So if we were to go on the low end, that meant that in Omaha, there were about 5,000 people just in this city who have DID. Every single person we talked to had to pause and realize, wow, this is a lot more common than I thought. To finish things off, we asked if people would believe that we had DID, and that was met with even more surprise than the number 5,000. We were told that we looked just like a normal person, and that they, nobody would have been able to guess that we had DID, which, you know, was kind of the point of the whole thing. Helping people understand that a person with DID is normal, just like anybody else. Everyone on Earth has their own struggles. Ours come in the shape of multiple identities in one body. But that doesn't change the fact that we are normal people with hopes and dreams, who take personal responsibility, who work hard. People with DID are normal people. They're just a lot of normal people in one human container. <laughs> Let's hear your guys' feedback. I apologize that we couldn't actually give you the audio of the answers people gave us, uh, but from what I've relayed to you, what was the most surprising response that we got? And what are some misconceptions that you had about DID before you found our channel or a channel like ours? Most importantly, I want you to reflect on those misconceptions and how your understanding was corrected and how maybe you could use your education to help correct someone else's misunderstandings. Whether you have any kind of disorder or not, your voice is important to the mental health community. And if everybody takes advantage of opportunities for education that come their way, the world's gonna change for the better, real fast. I hope you guys have an awesome new year. Thanks for sticking around with us in 2019. Here's to all the great things in 2020. And as always, remember that you are loved, you are valuable, and you are valid. Take care, guys. Bye.